Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harrison. I read, review and discuss fantasy and science fiction books. Today, I have got for you a discussion on the Kindle Paperwhite. So I picked up a secondhand Kindle Paperwhite very recently. Um, I got one from a store chain in the UK called CEX. I actually used to work there years ago, um, but they're a great place to buy secondhand electronics because they have a two year warranty which is pretty much better than you could get first-hand in many cases. And also this was under half the price of what it was selling for on Amazon, um, even though it is the latest model of Kindle. So I decided to go for the regular Paperwhite, not the Signature Edition, um, mostly because I have absolutely no idea, I had no idea up front whether I would like reading on this device um, and no idea whether I was going to keep it or not. So my original plan was buy a Kindle Paperwhite. If I love it, get rid of my other small Kindle, the 2022 basic Kindle. Um, but if I don't love it, then get rid of the Paperwhite and keep the basic Kindle. So I basically, I own all three Kindles currently. Uh, so I have the Kindle Scribe, I have the Kindle Paperwhite, and I have previously mentioned Kindle Basic. So the Scribe is obviously kind of its own thing. The majority of my use for the Scribe actually is note taking. So I use this for work and um, I actually, my work contributed to the cost of this because it was going to be a work device. Um, so the Kindle Scribe is for me a lot of the time used for note taking, sketching, um, making lists, uh, right doing things like taking the minutes in meetings. So that's what I use the scribe for. Um, and I find that insanely helpful. The, my favorite feature is being able to look at the notebooks on, for example, my phone and screenshotting them and sending them to the people who need to see those notes. And it's just a lovely experience, honestly. It's much nicer than note taking, for example, on a tablet. So, why do I have two small Kindles? So I'll tell you now, this Kindle I have not used since I picked up the Paperwhite. And the reason being is that I was like, I'm going to give the Paperwhite a thorough use, thorough review. So I've read a few chapters now of Fires of Heaven on it. Um, and my next book up is actually a Kindle only book that I don't have physically, which is Shadow of Hyperion. So when I get Shadow, when I move on to Shadow of Hyperion, when I finish Fires of Heaven, I will be exclusively reading that on the Paperwhite, and I will um, be give kind of using that as how could I use this long term, if that makes sense. So currently, my decision is: Do I want this size or this size? Um, I'm actually leaning, and I never thought I would say this because I love the Kindle Basic. I've used this for months. I bought this at the end of last year. I've taken it to me, with me so many times when I've been like, oh, I can't really fit a book in my bag. Or like, oh, I don't want, I, this is like, this weighs less than my phone and is almost smaller than my phone. Like it's not as tall and it's a little bit more wide, but it's, it is, you know, similar, in fact, almost the same size as my phone. So it slides into my jeans pocket. I'll put my phone and my Kindle in there. And then I can say, for example, I am going to drop something off and I have to wait around. I've got the Kindle. If I am picking my son up from school and I get there early, I can read a couple of pages on a Kindle. I don't have to read on my phone on the Kindle app, which obviously is fine but it's not as good an experience. So the portability and usability of this Kindle has been fantastic. The backlight is great. It has basically all the features of the Paperwhite, but just with a slightly cheaper construction. So you can feel how cheap the plastic is. Um, it's very much like it's hard touch plastic. Um, the plastic is all the way around on the front. And then this, uh, as far as I'm aware, this is a naked e-ink screen. I'm sure somebody said this on another review, that this is basically an e-ink screen, 
whereas the paper white has a cover of glass on the front. The thing that you may be able to see in the video that I can certainly see in real life is how covered in fingerprints my paper white is versus how unbothered by fingerprints the basic is. So there's quite a lot of fingerprints like you can see it a bit on the video I think on the back. Uh, yeah if in that light look you can see how gross and fingerprinty this is. Um, to be fair I did not clean this before making this video but I wanted to make it a bit more what your Kindle paper white would probably look like. Um, I don't use a case on my Kindle as well which might change that so I have a slip case that like protects it from bumps and scratches when I put it in a bag but if I'm just putting it in my pocket or I'm using it around the house I don't use uh, don't use a case of any kind. Um, I have thought about getting one of those cases that's also a stand. I used to have one for my Kindle Voyage and I loved it um, but I haven't seen anything like it for the paper white so far in my very limited research. So the paper white is very bright which is great so the extremely readable I have the text set to what I think is a pretty normal level um, in fact, I've read further on since. Uh, so I've read a bit further on in the physical edition and then via audiobook. Um, the one other thing that I have noticed recently, and this is probably a me problem, because I have three Kindles, WhisperSync doesn't work that great. I will often read a bit on uh, the Kindle and then open up the audiobook and it hasn't synchronized across or I will read a bit of the audiobook say well I'm doing some chores and then be like right I have time to sit down now and I'll sit down and want to finish the chapter that I was listening to because I would always prefer to physically read if possible so I want to sit down and finish the chapter that I was listening to via Kindle and the whisper sync should mean that I can literally pause the Kindle Oh, pause the Kindle, pause the audiobook, open the Kindle and the, the same line that I was listening to should be on the page somewhere. But I have found that that is not usually the case so I end up having to listen to full chapters or read full chapters and then take a pause basically and be like right if I'm swapping formats I'm swapping at the end of a chapter. Um, so that is probably a quibble due to how many Kindles I have and how often I use all three. So while I haven't used the basic very often for um, a little while, uh, well, I haven't used it since I picked up the paper white a couple of weeks ago, um, but I do swap between these two quite a lot um, and between audiobook as well on, again, multiple devices for the audiobooks. I'll listen to the audiobook like in a browser or like on my phone or on my tablet. So you tend to get, so like the whisper sync does I think get a bit confused with that many devices which is fine I have had you know other devices that do things like cloud saves for video games that have had issues too um, so I'm not saying that Amazon have absolutely dropped the ball but it does seem to me that uh, it is not working all that great and I wonder if it's just that it's not syncing the finish place very well with the Kindles because they aren't always constantly connected in the same way that um, my phone is. But anyway, the Paperwhite. So I have actually, and I never thought I would say this, I have enjoyed the extra screen real estate. So the screen basically starts at the same level. Look at the bottom of the Kindle. Um, I'll hold this a bit closer so you can see. So if you hold them level, you can see the screen starts at the same sort of stage, but it is much taller and wider. And I never thought that I would appreciate, I would be that kind of person. But because I really like the, the, the little portable screen here, because I'm like, if you're looking at this versus a book, this is a much more portable option and as well the kindle is more portable than the book obviously the paper white but the thing with the paper white is that 
I think the screen just feels a little bit nicer being behind this glass, feels like a bit more of a premium experience. The thing, however, that I've noticed is because it doesn't have this raised edge bezel around the edge of the screen, sometimes I will be holding the Kindle and accidentally turn a page. Um, it's not super frequent, but it never happens to me on the Scribe or the Basic, and that is probably just due to the construction. The Scribe is obviously massive, um, so um, you can hold it in a lot of places like this big chunky edge, for example, without having to go near the screen. Whereas the paper white, because the bezel is quite small and my thumb, you know, my thumb rests basically right at the edge of the screen. So if there's, if I'm doing, yeah, if I'm moving my thumb or something, then sometimes that causes a page turn, which it doesn't do on the basic because there's a lip and this, the, the edge is raised above the screen. So this is mostly, this video is kind of designed to be like my initial thoughts. Cause obviously I've only read, I've probably only read a couple of hours on this so far versus I've read a lot of full books on here. I've read probably 10 or more full books on this one. So this is kind of designed to be like an initial impressions once I've read a few more books, I am going to do a comparison and recommendation video. And then I'll tell you in that video, which Kindle I've decided to keep permanently to be my permanent Kindle. I am also, and now this isn't, this is a Kindle video, but I am also looking at other e-reader brands. So I have recently been looking at Kobo and at books. Um, books is the ideal for me in that is an Android e-reader. So I could, for example, have the Kindle app and the Shonen Jump app, the Google Play Books app. Uh, I have a lot of e-books that I've got through different sources. And the same for audiobooks. I've bought some audiobooks from Hundle Bundle. And so I've had to use a separate app for those outside of Audible. So an Android e-reader would allow me access to every e-book store at the same time, which would be a real benefit. The downside for those Android ebook readers is that they're like £400, um, which is more than I paid for this monstrosity, this giant e-reader. Um, so I am loath to spend that kind of money. I did say originally that maybe if the channel starts to make money um, from YouTube ads and stuff, I would start picking up other e-readers to review and compare. Um, but I think for the time being, I am on Team Kindle, mostly due to price. So I paid £90 for this one, I think, and £80 for this one. Um, these are, for some reason, priced really low at CEX. don't know why. Um, there is a signature edition which adds um, automatic warm light and also wireless charging. But I actually have turned off warm lighting on basically all of my devices because usually if I'm looking at a device, it's to try to stay awake because I'm up at night with a child. Um, so I don't want the warm light that helps you fall asleep easily because I'm so tired because I'm a dad. I have no problems falling asleep easily. It is staying awake to read that I have the problem with. Anyway, um, if you have any questions about the Kindle Paperwhite, and um, this is the 2021 edition, I think, because this is the 22 basic and the, yeah, 22 scribe, I want to say, 22. Um, so, yeah, this is the oldest Kindle of the three, which is probably why it's cheaper. But, well, second hand cheaper, not on Amazon. This is the middle of the range. Um, so, this also, what is cheaper, or the middle of the range, is probably the most popular reader reader in the world. I feel like this is the one that everyone buys when everyone's like, what, which e-reader should I buy? They buy a paper white. Um, more people should be buying this, by the way. Way more people do not need this. They should get this. Uh, but the paper white, yeah, if you've got any questions about the paper white, um, I might not be the best person to answer because I've only had it for a couple of weeks, but I am happy to do so. Uh, and I will try and answer my best in the comments. If you've got a paper white and you want to tell people why it's great, please do so. Uh, if you have another alternative e-reader brand recommendation, 
please let me know in the comments down below. So I have mostly stayed with Kindles for Kindle Unlimited for access to indie and self-pub fantasy books. Um, but if there is another option, then please do let me know. But the reason also why I'm leaning towards books is so that I could have a non-Kindle e-reader, but still have access to Kindle Unlimited. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you liked it, and also subscribe to the channel to help me buy a fancy e-reader. Goodbye.